Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Mir Khan. I am the chairman of the steering committee for this convention and also board member of ISNA. Uh, the way we are going to do is uh, our president, Brother uh, Sapa Zarzul, will make uh, some uh, remarks and then uh, our executive director, Brother Bashad Salim, he will also make some statements and uh, also the uh, chair of the CIOGC, former chair of the CIOGC, Ishad Khan, will make some remarks. Uh, subsequent to that, if there are any questions, we are ready to take it and go from there. But the Sapa. Thank you so much, Brother Mir. Assalamu alaikum. Good morning. Thank you so much mm -hmm. for being here, for joining us for this press conference, announcing the opening of our 60th annual ISNA convention. It is indeed, and as you can tell from the number, that it is a special convention. It's the 60th annual. ISNA, alhamdulillah, is one of the largest and oldest Islamic organizations in the country, uh, has been serving the Muslim community for 60 years. And although we have, a, as we call them, basket of services, a lot of different things that we provide for the community, uh, and, and our executive director, our esteemed executive director, can speak to that in more details, but uh, one of the most important one of them is the convention. And the ISNA convention is not only, is not only the annual, largest annual gathering uh, for us um, uh, at ISNA, it really is a transmer, transmer, uh, transmitive place. Um, and I say that because I know personally so many people who has undergone transformations in their lives attending the ISNA convention year after year. I have known so many Islamic organizations and organizations of service that are serving the Muslim community and even society at large that have taken place and taken shape in this convention. This convention is a lot more than just people getting together and just having a good time. It is that. And we are proud of that. And it's a beautiful weekend where people normally are, are, you know, they leave having been rejuvenated, having been learned a lot and, and met old friends and made new friends. <laughs> it is all of that. But it is far bigger than that. It is, it is again, the incubator for a lot of new ideas, a lot of, 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 of new concepts that within <clears throat> short period normally we see them on the ground in reality. Uh, helping and serving the Muslim community. Now, it being the 60th annual, that is that is the icing on the cake. We are, uh, alhamdulillah, going to see most, in fact, I think every living pre former president of ISNA uh, at this convention. Uh, we're going to be celebrating them, celebrating the work that they have done uh, over the years, but also uh, uh, recommitting ourselves to the uh, ideals of ISNA, which is actually taken from the ideals of Islam, to uh, renew our commitment to the Muslim community and, and, and uh, uh, you know, uh, showcase what we are about. And uh, we are thankful that you're here and uh, we look forward to you being with us the entire three days. And if you have any questions uh, regarding this great event, uh, I'm happy to answer when, when time comes. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Basharat Salim. I'm the executive director at the Islamic Society of North America. On behalf of ISNA, welcome to all of you to 60th annual ISNA convention. Uh, mashallah, you know, this year this organization has completed 60 years of service to the Muslim community. Uh, as our president said, we offer many programs. We have a very wide basket of services that we offer to our community, which includes obviously our annual convention, our largest event but also many regional conferences that we host in different cities throughout the country. We also do education forums twice a year. We offer services for our youth uh, through the Muslim Youth of North America. We have an interfaith program uh, where, uh, which is operated through our office in Washington, D.C. Uh, we work in many other areas for the community, whether it's in matrimonial services, whether it's offering scholarships to students, and so on and so forth. So alhamdulillah, at this point, when we have completed 60 years of service, we remember those founders and pioneers who planted the seed of ISNA 60 years ago, 
right here in the state of Illinois at the University of Illinois in Urbana-Champaign. They were the visionaries, they made sacrifices, and we are benefiting today from what they had done at that time. Now, um, as we serve the Muslim community, we are obviously focused on that mission, which has been our mission right from the beginning. But while we do so, we are also benefiting the larger society in this country. For example, um, you know, if we talk about the issues of the world today, one of the, one of the problems facing us as humanity is climate change. Uh, definitely one of the top three uh, global issues that we face according to the United Nations. Uh, we started a Green Faith Initiative at ISNA about 10 years ago, where we host webinars and conferences and develop resources to inform our community about the threat of climate change. And we have done a lot of work, developed a lot of resources uh, to address this issue. We have promoted always interfaith harmony. I talked about our office in Washington, D.C. that deals with our interfaith services. We have Brother Arshan is here. We are hosting an interfaith banquet on Sunday during this convention where we have invited about 200 leaders, interfaith guests that will be part of that event here as well. As an organization, we promote um, social equity, social justice, racial justice, and we host programs in that direction as well. Uh, we address human rights, whether that is in this country, whether it's globally, we are always engaged in those issues that affect our larger society. So as an organization, we are committed to uh, change, we are committed to the development of our community, uh, putting resources together, and inshallah, I hope and I pray that this organization stays firm for the next 60 years. Thank you. Brother Shad Khan, former chairman of CLGC. Asalaamu Alaikum. Uh, my name is Urshad Khan, uh, past chairman for the Council of Islamic Organization of Greater Chicago. On behalf of the council and all his entire membership, I want to welcome ISNA to the Chicago. It is indeed a amazing year this is as we are celebrating 30 years of ISNA. 30 years of ISNA leadership, service, and the way forward that they have shown for the Muslim community nationally is commendable. I want to thank the past leadership and the current leadership for all their efforts they made towards moving the Muslim community forward. There are so many programs, as Bashar just talked about, that ISNA does and offer. And there are a few that I want to highlight today as some of those signature events. One of them is a convention, as was shared by Brother <coughs> Safa. The, the convention has been the key of the success for ISNA for bringing the communities together and being here on this weekend and empower our community with the education forum, interfaith dialogue, and continue to move forward, enhancing the relationship building that they started nationally for civic and political engagement. So this is why it's so important for having a national organization, ISNA, to lead the Muslim community forward. At the council, does the same thing at the state level. For the past 31 years, CIOGC, Council of Islamic Organization of Greater Chicago, has been representing Muslim community, one of the largest Muslim community in the land of Chicago, in serving the needs of community and leading the way forward for the Muslim community here locally. I'm so happy to see ISNA coming back uh, to the Chicago, and I'm so happy that CIGC continue to be the partner for the ISNA, and we are excited for this partnership, and Council is committed to have this partnership for many years to come. So I want to thank again for the leadership to bring the ISNA back to Chicago again for the 60th uh, convention uh, in, in the Chicago, and I'm, I'm sure the community is all looking forward to have a fun, full event this weekend, not only the educational program, 
but also having a fun with the family and also an opportunity for networking as well. So with that, I in conclude, I want to thank the leadership, President Safa Zarzul, Basharat, Executive Director, Brother Mir Khan, uh, the chair for the committee, and also my dear friend uh, Azhar Aziz, who's sitting in the back, say salam. <laughs> and all of you and Ashwaq, everybody here, has done an amazing job. And I also want to extend my thank you to all the volunteers who really put their effort and dedication into making this event successful. And I wish all the best and the success for this event as well. Thank you. Asalaamu As Alaikum. Uh, are there any questions uh, from the folks who are here? Uh, I, I first, I wanted to, by the way, thank Brother uh, Shad for uh, for his comments, and uh, we are very grateful and thankful to the to the partnership with CIOGC. Um, it, it really is 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 an amazing partnership that had withstood, you know, the test of time. And as you said, we we really look forward to having this partnership between ISNA and CIOGC to continue for years to come. Um, as to your questions, I, I believe there are people from. From ISNA, I personally did not attend the, the Parliament of World Religion. I've had the pleasure of attending it in the past, but we did have people from ISNA uh, that have attended. And it is an important organization that we have very excellent relations with, and we try to be part uh, of, of, of the work that they do. Um, as far as, uh, you know, we believe that you know our primary responsibility as ISNA as an organization is, and it is in our motto, it is in our mission statement, is, is to really support and nurture the Muslim community in North America. Uh, of course, part of that is to learn how and, and educate our Muslim community on how to, learn in peace, to, to live in peace with every component uh, of, uh, uh, that, that makes up the United States of America. Every you know, community faith community, racial community, ethnic community. Uh, and to me, by example, by having our interfaith, uh, for example, programs, uh, reaching out to our brothers and sisters in humanity, our, our fellow citizens that are of different faiths uh, and different backgrounds, and working with them on common issues like gun violence that you have mentioned, we believe that we are speaking with our actions uh, uh, as to how we can make the world a better place. Uh, you know, we are part of many, many programs, and I will leave it to Brother Bashara to elaborate on, on the breadth of them, but I do know that we are part of the gun violence, the, the anti-gun violence initiative that, that is nationwide. Uh, we are part of the, um, if you can, if so you can... Interfaith partners. Right, but also we are the, the, the anti-nuclear proliferation uh, um, uh, program, we are, you know, we are part of, I would say, at least 10 to 12 partnerships that are aimed at combating some of the social ills and some of the, of the things that plague us as a society and as a world because of how we believe, uh, how much we believe in those issues. Uh, so it's not an issue of just advocacy and talking. We're actually part of initiatives that have, you know, <clears throat> meetings, develop actual action plans and implementations to combat the social ills that we suffer from all of us in the United States and, and we all need to work together to, to alleviate them. So there's a, so yeah, just, just uh, I don't know if this is working. No, this is it's working? Okay. So uh, your comment about the World uh, uh, Parliament, uh, uh, which hosted here in Chicago, uh, the council was a major part of it. Uh, uh, we were the co-host committee here in Chicago. And uh, we, Arshan was one of them who uh, participated in all those events. And our chairman was also available for uh, opening ceremony as well. So we have been, council has been part of those world religion. It happened before in Chicago, after a few years now, it's happening in Chicago again. So we have uh, hosted events, we have partnered up with the uh, faith base, and we were actively participating in that uh, this weekend uh, when we had that. The rest, I think, uh, Brother Safa or on the gun violence, uh, council also does a lot of advocacy work locally here in the state of uh, Illinois. We advocated a lot of gun policies, you know, smart rules, 
smart driven <coughs> laws that has been uh, advocated here in, in the state of Illinois. And you might have seen it, CIGC does once a year, Illinois Muslim Action Day, where we go in Springfield and advocate on behalf of our community. Last year when we did that, four or five bills got approved and, and got into the law, which is, you know, uh, driving license. That is so common for everybody, uh, making sure that we have everybody documented or not undocumented have a, a driving license so they can go to work and come back to work and, and uh, take care of their family. So that bill was passed. Fairness and drug pricing increase, we passed that law. Gun violence law. So there's a lot of that we work on. And then uh, a milestone uh, bill was passed in the state of Illinois, which was the only one in the state of Illinois, not in the national, is the MINA bill, where a Middle Eastern, North African will be having a category. If you look at the categories, you have white, Hispanic, or, or Asian, but you don't have a MENA category. So now, in the state of Illinois, that will become a law starting January 1st that Middle Eastern will be recognized as a category. So these are the advocacy work we do with it locally, and we support ISNA's national programs and national advocacy work, so that's why we work hand in hand with ISNA at the national level. Uh, thank you, gentlemen. I, I think uh, what we want to do is uh, we have another program at 11 o'clock, uh, uh, which uh, we'll, we'll wrap it up after that that question uh, we have. And uh, uh, the ISNA leadership will be available all through the convention if you want to interview them and uh, talk to them more about the conventions. Last question from you. I mean, I, I, first of all, I, I don't subscribe to uh, labels. You know, you, you, your progressive may not be mine or somebody else's and all of that. So, so for me, for me uh, getting away from labels, Alhamdulillah, is, Islam is a religion that has been preserved. And the truth of it is, is, is clear and obvious. And in fact, part of our job as Muslims, uh, as the Islamic Society of North America is provide the platform for our scholars, for our community activists to come together to, to clarify, you know, the, the, the different positions of Islam that are very well established, that are not, you know, uh, hazy, they are not, you know, uh, and then provide also, which is more important, perhaps like, for example, through MENA, provide also the opportunities for our youth to come and learn Islam. And, and so uh, we can continue to thrive as a community and we can continue to preserve our heritage and our religion. And to me, you know, when you live in an open society, people are free to think whatever they want and to be all over the, the spectrum uh, as far as what they believe in. At the end of the day, I believe that as long as organizations like ISNA are providing the platforms, are working hard to outreach to the community to provide spaces for scholars, sound scholarship and sound scholars to teach, we are in good shape and we are, you are, we are just fine. It doesn't worry me whatever trend or fad is out there for the moment uh, because at the end of the day, truth is very clear and it stands out um, and, and I count on that. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Safai. And I want to thank the uh, media person who are here to be covering this. Uh, I appreciate uh, coming and covering it as a kid. Thank you very much. Thank, thank, you. You. thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Your, your, your presence with us today, but we also invite you to be with us as much as you can throughout this weekend to witness the, the simplicity and the beauty of, of the Muslim community in America and how it is in good faith trying to make sure that it is not only a part and parcel of the mosaic of America, but that it's a contributing part of that mosaic. It, it's actively making sure that America is a more beautiful place and that we continue together to march into a more perfect union. Inshallah. Thank you so much for being here. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi Thank you so much. The theme of our convention is 60 years of service, navigating the way forward. At this convention, you will...
Bazaar that is right behind you, you will find more than 550 booths, businesses, organizations, non-profits who will be showcasing their important work and their businesses. As I move forward with this very tight program, I'm going to recognize few individuals and we have four honored guests who will be speaking this morning. So I want to begin by recognizing certain individuals, so kindly please stand up so that we can all recognize you. I want to begin with Jeremy Young, District Director. If you are here, kindly please stand up. There, there he is. Larry Herman, Oak Brook Village President. Jerry Barron, Roselle Public Library District Trustee. We have Justice Linda Devonport, Justice Appellate Court. And now it gives me a distinct um, honor to welcome our very special guest, Justice Linda, uh, Justice Mary K. Bryan, Justice Illinois Supreme Court. I would request her to kindly please come over here and address the gathering for a couple of minutes. Thank you. That hurdle wasn't as hard as I thought it was going to be getting up on that platform. Good morning, everyone. Um, it is indeed a pleasure to be here with you this morning. Um, President Zazura, thank you. Ashfar, thank you so much for including me um, as you start off this morning. I just want to say that, you know, since the day I started coming, to DuPage County and neighboring counties in a campaign that began in 2021. No one has been more open and welcoming to me than this community. All prejudice and hate are the product of ignorance. And they can't end until we know and we overcome our ignorance. And organizations like yours and the heartfelt community outreach that I received and then I know every person who's willing to learn proceeds will overcome that hatred and that prejudice with love, friendship, and kindness. And I so appreciate the opportunity to be here. Thank you. Have a wonderful session. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, now, my brothers and sisters, I would very quickly like to recognize some of the important leaders who are sitting over here. Safa Zarzur is the current president of ISNA. I had the honor of serving this organization twice as its president, but we all are beneficiaries of, because of the hard work and dedication of the founding fathers and mothers of this organization. So in this audience, we have our scholar and teacher, former president of ISNA, Sheikh Noor Muhammad Abdullah, I want to welcome him to the beautiful city of Chicago. At the back, you will find Basharat Salim, the young dynamic executive director of ISNA. And the entire organization depends on his able leadership. We have Mr. Rafiq Ahmed, the vice president from Canada, who is among us. He's right over there next to Brother Safa. I also see um, Karim Irfan, the Vice President of uh, ISNA US. If he's here, please get recognized. Okay, and then we have our esteemed board members. Sister Malika Khan is here. Sister Salwa Sayyid is here. And um, I see, do I miss Brother Mir Khan, the board member, and also the steering committee chair is here. So we want to thank the entire board and the leadership and the staff of ISNA for all their hard work. So as we move along, I want to mention this, that at this convention, the convention will begin with a Friday sermon as per the tradition where the president of ISNA will deliver the Friday sermon, followed by a formal inaugural session where we'll have some distinguished guests who will address the session. And throughout the day, you will have 
sessions where prominent scholars, speakers, activists, leaders, individuals who have expertise in different fields will give their talks and enlighten us. At this convention, you will find many elected officials, members of Congress. We have Mazen Basrawi all the way from the White House who will be coming and addressing the convention. We are also very honored to have Khizr Khan, Gold Star Father and President, uh, Presidential Medal of Honor recipient. And I want to mention that yesterday, the U.S. chaplains who are serving in the U.S. Armed Forces, they started their meeting yesterday, and we want to take this opportunity to thank all the men and women in uniform for their service to our nation. Also at this convention, you will find a service project where we'll be packaging meals to serve our brothers and sisters, especially in the inner city areas, and we will be packing this meal so that it can be served in the greater Chicago area. One of the high points of the convention will be the Community Service Recognition Luncheon that will take place tomorrow afternoon where a prominent Muslim leader will uh, receive a Lifetime Achievement Award and the keynote speech will be given up by a very well-known prominent scholar, Sheikh Hamza Yusuf. In the evening, we will continue with this tradition and we will honor a giant of Islamic work in North America, Dr. Jamal Badwi, who is a mentor, teacher, a very well-known scholar, will receive a Lifetime Achievement Award. We also have entertainment every single day where we have stand-up comedians who will enlighten us and will entertain the attendees. Also, my dear brothers and sisters, on Sunday evening, we will recognize a prominent interreligious leader. This year, we are so happy to announce the name of Catherine Loray, who will receive the Interfaith Lifetime Achievement Award. I would urge all of you to kindly please follow the program book where you will find every single detail of the entire program that is taking place. So continuing with this, I want to recognize a few other prominent guests who are present over here. Donna Miller, Commissioner, 6th District, Cook County. We have the Council General of Pakistan, Tariq Kareem. We have Jesse G. Rees, Justice of the Illinois Appellate Court. We have Akbal Khan, DuPage County Sheriff, Advisory Board. And now it gives me a distinct honor to welcome Mayor Mary Alexander Basta from the Bolingbrook. I would request her to kindly please come on the stage and share a few words. First of all, I would like to uh, echo and congratulate the entire board and all of the volunteers. I know how difficult it is to put on an event this magnitude, and so congratulations to you. I'm sure that weekend will be amazing. It is an honor to be here today with the Islamic Society of North America ceremony celebrating 60 years. What an achievement. 60 years is quite an accomplishment. It's a period of time that reflects dedication, history, and great pride in an organization. I'm sure there are many of you that are here today that have been involved with the organization for many, many years, spanning generations of Islamic Americans committed to service. Thank you for your passion in building bridges with our faith communities, civic society, and our governments. As the mayor of the village of Bolingbrook, we're proud to say that we have two very prominent mosques in the village. We're honored to be one of Fortune's top 50 municipalities, and this is all due to our diversity and our openness to be an inclusive community. The ability to work together. That is key, all of us working together as one. We can achieve so much more. We live in a multi-ethnic, multi-religious society which requires us to prosper by doing just that, working together as one unit. In order to build strong, healthy communities, not just for us today, but for our future. And we must be invested in our children and future generations. 
When we set aside our differences, we can see the beauty and strength in our similarities. I see that spirit here today. I congratulate you once more on your 60 years of achievement, and I look forward to celebrating with you for another 60 years. Thank you so much for having me, and best of luck. Thank you, Madam Mayor, for your kind words. My dear brothers and sisters, for 60 years, Islamic Society of North America has served the needs of Muslim community in North America. From education to youth programming, from conventions to important training programs, ISNA has been a part of your life with its wide basket of services. Also keep in mind, when we take this convention with thousands and thousands of attendees, it brings enormous amount of economic resources to the county and to the city and the state. And this is the work that Islamic Society of North America has been doing. And we are so indebted to this beautiful city of Chicago that has given us some of the most successful and memorable conventions. So these next three days will be days of learning. They'll be the days of togetherness, unity, spiritual upliftment, and to send a, small, a very strong message to general public that we are all together and we are here at this beautiful convention center. I also want to recognize the State House Rep, Mr. Justin Slaughter, which is here. We want to get... So good to see you, sir. We also want to recognize Candace Adams, Circuit Court Clerk, DuPage County. Saida Uzma Iftikhar, Police Officer, South Elgin. Thank you so much for your service. We have uh, State Rep Terra Costa from District 42. And we have Chief of Staff Donna Wendy, District 41. Now it gives me great pleasure to welcome State Rep Janet Yangor to come over here and say a few words. Thank you so much. Uh, I am Janet Hagor. I am the state representative for the 41st district representing the Naperville, Warrenville, and Bolingbrook areas. Uh, on behalf of me and my colleagues in the Illinois House, and especially on behalf of the representatives that are here today, Representative Tara Costa Howard, Representative Justin Slaughter, I want to offer our deepest, deepest congratulations on this 60 years of service. What an incredible achievement. And let me just tell you, on behalf of my colleagues, it has been just an incredible honor and an incredible pleasure to work with the Muslim community to make sure that, that we are getting our legislative and your legislative priorities through the House, through the Senate, and to the governor. It is because of your incredible engagement that we have, uh, that you have brought in Illinois, the Illinois House's uh, first, not, not first, not only the first, but the second, um, the first two Muslim American legislators, Representative Abdel Nasser Rashid, Representative Zabir Al Sayed. It's because of your incredible engagement that you are so well represented, represented in the Illinois House. It's because of your engagement that we have pushed through legislation to make sure that we are teaching about Muslim American history in our schools, that we have Muhammad Ali Day, that we have uh, culturally competent uh, teachers and educators in our school. It is a pleasure to work with you, and on behalf of all of us, I know that we are looking forward to, to working with you more in the future to make sure that we are representing all of us and making our society, our state, more inclusive. Thank you so much. Just in case if you have this question in your mind, what else ISNA does? So I want to very proudly share this with you. We hold our annual Green Ramadan campaign every single year. We release six issues of our award-winning magazine, Islamic Horizons. We provide scholarships to dozens of young generation, young men and women, young boys and girls, 
who are energized and they are empowered through our youth work and our flagship magazine is known as Islamic Horizons and the youth work is done under the able leadership and this entity called as Muslim Youth of North America. We also provide chaplaincy services for men and women who are serving in the U.S. Armed Forces, hospitals, Air Force, Navy, and other institutions. Through ISNA's interfaith collaborative efforts and government outreach, prominent scholars, national leaders, and dignitaries have addressed our con convention and conferences over the years, including five former U.S. presidents, including the current president, President Joe Biden. This government outreach enables ISNA to provide a voice for the Muslim community in the United States as we engage at the highest level of our country. I also want to recognize some other prominent guests who are present over here. John Eidelberg, Sheriff from the Lake County, Illinois. Back over there. Holly Kim, Lake County Treasurer. We have uh, Monica Garden, Commissioner, 5th District. We also have Chief of Staff, Donna Vende, District 41. Cora Lehman, Trustee, Village of uh, Hawthorne Woods. Dr. Sabahan, Trustee, Village of Martin Grove. Mazhar Khan, Park Commissioner, Village of Martin Grove. Ashfaq Sayyid, President, Neighborville Library. He is also our media chair for this year's convention. And we also have Dan Pogo, the MWRD Commissioner, who is with us. And Corny Heggy, who is also with us from the Cook County. We would request all of our distingu distinguished guests to have some refreshments in room number 10. And later on, the steering committee chair, Mir Khan, has very graciously offered to take you around the convention area to show you the bazaar area and the entire setup that we have put together, where in the coming next three days, thousands and thousands of Muslims and our friends from the other faiths will come under this roof and will enjoy the 60th annual convention of the Islamic Society of North America. I want to conclude with this reminder. My dear brothers and sisters and my dear friends, the changing landscape of religion in America demands new ways of understanding Muslim communities and further developing a Muslim friendly American identity. To this end, Islamic Society of North America will help Muslim organizations across the nation achieving lasting impact by facilitating educational opportunities, fostering productive partnerships, and organizing for spiritual and civic engagement. In short, Islamic Society of North America will work to uplift the community at large in all of its forms. Having said that now, I would request all of our distinguished guests, dignitaries, to kindly please line up in the front for the ribbon cutting ceremony. I would also request our former presidents who are present over here, our board members to join all the elected officials for this formal ceremony. So kindly please line up in the front and we will start this ceremony in next two, three, let's go. Thank you.